How much power are exhaust upgrades worth? What are shorty headers worth? What about inexpensive long tubes? What about the expensive long tubes? How does our open dyno exhaust compared to a full length exhaust in the vehicle? Finally, how much is a bigger exhaust worth on a turbo? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and as always, welcome to the channel. Once again, we're asking, what's it worth? And today we're looking at exhaust. For instance, what are shorty headers worth? What are long tube headers worth? What are inexpensive headers worth? What are expensive headers worth? What's a full exhaust worth? And most importantly, what's an exhaust worth on a turbo? Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out what's it worth, exhaust systems. We're gonna find out what exhaust system upgrades are worth on a variety of different LS combinations. We're gonna start out with the smallest one, a 4.8 liter. This test motor was an LR4. It had a stock block, a stock crank, stock rods. We had changed the pistons at one point to a 7cc, you know, very small dome with valve reliefs, a JE piston. Had stock 706 heads. Uh, we had, I had the stock camshaft in there, stock truck intake manifold, an AccuFab throttle body, stock rockers, you know, all of that stuff. Basically just had a stock motor. And we ran it first with stock exhaust manifolds with basically just extensions, two and a half inch extensions off of the stock exhaust manifolds. So run in this manner, basically our kind of bone stock 4.8 liter with a Mazira electric pump. We did obviously optimize the air feel and timing with the Holly HP management system. So on the 4.8 with the stock cam and stock heads, our stock exhaust manifolds produce 329 horsepower and 335 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we put in a set of JBA shorty headers. You can see, yeah, you know, tiny, kind of tiny little gains here. Three, four horsepower maybe at the most. Peak power was up to 333 horsepower. Yeah, 333. Peak torque was up to 338 foot pounds. Here's what happened when we put on a set of inexpensive, you know, offshore kind of long tube headers and we picked up a Per, you know, much better than the shorty headers. So peak power you can see was up to 339 horsepower. Peak torque was up to now 342 foot pounds of torque. And just out of curiosity, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the shorty headers here. So it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna show you what happened when we put on uh, an expensive set of headers, expensive set of long tube headers. And they were worth, you know, maybe a little bit better than the inexpensive ones, although, the, <laughs> excuse me, they did trade power down low. But with the high dollar headers, 300, again, 338 or 338 and a half horsepower. And you see a little bit more of a gain out here on the very top. But this is what happens when you run long tube headers. Basically on a stock one, you're looking at, you know, 10 horsepower and 10 foot pounds of torque. Now let's see what happens when we do the same test on a... The, on the same motor, but with a modified version where we have ported heads and a camshaft. Okay, guys, now we're going to run the same test on our 4.8 liter, and we have upgraded it with a set of TrickFlow 205 heads and a Crane 224 232 camshaft. That's the duration at 50. It's 590 lift and 115 degree lobe separation angle. Otherwise, the test is identical. We just ran the same. We, re we equipped this thing with the stock exhaust manifolds to begin with and our, and our extensions on this. Made 427 horsepower and 370 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed our shorty headers. Same, same shorty headers. We did pick up a little bit of power here. Peak power was up to 300 or 433 horsepower. Got a little bit of a gain through the whole curve. You know, so shorty headers may be worth a little something, not a whole bunch. Here's what happened when we put our inexpensive offshore headers on there. Got much bigger gains, obviously, with the headers down low. We picked up 314 to 332, or 333. So almost 20 foot-pounds down low. Up at the top, peak horsepower was now up at 443 horsepower. So we picked up quite a bit of power with the long tube headers. And then we tried installing our, you know, big dollar. <laughs> Big dollar headers, and really they were worth almost nothing compared to the lower dollar headers. We did see the same kind of fluctuation down low between the two headers because the two header styles, I'll go ahead and show you pictures of the two header styles here, were definitely different when we tested this. But it just goes to show you that even the inexpensive stuff can work pretty well. And now let's check out what happens when we did an exhaust setup 
on a 383. Okay, guys, now that we've shown you how much power long tube hitters and shorty hitters are worth over the stock exhaust manifolds on both the kind of stock application then a you know a little bit uh, more aggressive a little bit more powerful combination let's take a look and see what exhaust systems are worth so normally when we run a motor on the engine dyno we run it with long tube headers and collector extensions and then sometimes mufflers that's a three inch setup with a long tube header on it but what i wanted to do is compare that to a typical like a true you know complete exhaust system that you'd run in the vehicle so i had the guys at um hooker sent me a complete exhaust a catback exhaust this was a two and a half inch not a catback but a complete exhaust two and a half inch um, setup so what we did was compare the way that we normally run it on the engine dyno versus having a full exhaust like you'd see you know on a street camaro or chevelle or even an s10 truck so we ran, uh, we started out with a 383, and this was a basically a board and stroked 5.3 liter or a 4.8, doesn't matter, you can start with the same block. So we went to 3905 on the bore, we added a 4 inch stroker crank, that one was from Speedmaster, K1 rods, Wiseco pistons, we had TFS Gen X 225 heads on it, we had a crane cam in it that was 624 lift. 232, 242 at 50, and 112 degree lobe separation angle, ATI damper. Not that that really probably changed the power. Um, we had 75 pound injectors, a fast LSXR intake manifold, and inch and, inch and seven eighths long tube hooker headers. So what we did first is we ran this setup the way that we normally do. We ran uh, hooker headers, we ran about 18 inch collector extensions, and a lot of times we run, we have a good set of three inch Magnaflow mufflers that are basically straight through. Those usually don't affect power other than adding length to the collector extension, and that, that can change the power particularly down low, although it doesn't seem to affect the peak power at all. But what we did was we ran our setup with the long tube headers and collector and three inch collector extensions, uh, three inch diameter, 18 inches in length. And on this 383, the combination produced 551 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 510 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed the complete two and a half inch exhaust, but we were running the headers into the two and a half inch exhaust. You can see the complete exhaust didn't really change power, <coughs> excuse me, didn't really change power that dramatically. What we have is 542 horsepower and peak torque was down to 503 foot pounds. There were you know, a little bit more gains on the top, a little bit in the middle there, not re not really very much down low. Um, if, you know, if the exhaust system is going to change the flow rate of our combination, then we would, we would expect to see, you know, more power gains at the top. And we did see some mid-range power as well. But it, I think it shows you that a complete two and a half inch exhaust system versus this kind of race system that we run on the engine dyno, not really a big difference, even at the 550 horsepower level. So if you're talking about doing this test on a stock or a mild 4.8 or 4.3 that's 400 horsepower, you're going to see very, very little difference. Okay, guys, for our final exhaust test, we're going to take a look at an exhaust size test. We ran a 3-inch, 3.5, and 4-inch exhaust after the turbo on a turbocharged 6-liter. And the reason that we did that is... Turbo motors respond very well to very large exhausts. You do not want any restriction in the exhaust after the turbo. So I wanted to demonstrate that. So we ran all three of these exhaust sizes after the turbo. Our test motor was the original 6 liter Gen 4 Big Bang motor that made 1,540 horsepower. It was a stock bottom end LY6 with ring gap. We had TrickFlow 225 heads on it. We had a Stage 3 Turbo Cam from Brian Tooley Racing. We had a Dorman LS6 intake manifold and a stock size throttle body. For our turbo setup, our kit, we had stock exhaust manifolds feeding a 2.5 inch Y pipe with two Turbo Smart wastegates. For the turbo, we chose a Borg Warner single S480 turbo, but this was a T4 and not the usual T6 that we see with these. This was a billet wheel from the guys at Brian Tooley Racing and LJMS. <coughs> it had a 1.25 AR. We had a manual wastegate controller on it, and this thing also had a Procharger air to water intercooler on it. We ran it on good gas. And we ran this thing at a peak of 13.1 PSI. We had our Holly management system and stuff on it. We had big enough injectors. And run at 13 pounds of boost, 13.1 PSI peak, with the 4-inch exhaust, this thing made, our six, turbo 6-liter, six made 921 horsepower and 807 foot-pounds of torque. 
so it did well. Good, good, solid 900 horsepower turbo six liter. After we neck the exhaust down to a three and a half inch exhaust, the boost went down only slightly, 13.0 instead of 13.1. So really a variation between runs, more, more of that. But the power did drop. It went down to 884 horsepower and 786. And the back pressure, both after the turbo and before the turbo, both of those went up. The big, the big change came when we went neck this thing down to a three inch exhaust after the turbo. The power output dropped to 828 horsepower. So nearly, you know, over 90 horsepower, nearly, nearly a hundred horsepower and 750 foot pounds. So it dropped 57 foot pounds of torque. But there's more to the story than that as always, because we were not running an electronic wastegate controller. We were running a manual wastegate controller. The boost dropped. So the boost dropped from 13.1 PSI with the four inch exhaust down to 11.7 with the three inch exhaust. So, you know, a nearly hundred horsepower change in the exhaust system. Part of that is because we had lower boost. And for those of you guys wondering, well, how much is, is the boost worth? One pound of boost on a motor that makes this NA power is about 34 or 35 horsepower. So we could look at this thing being 50 horsepower more of this, of this amount maybe being responsible, you know, we can accredit that to basically the drop in boost, but the exhaust system did do two things. It, it lost power, you know, going to a smaller exhaust and increased back pressure. It did the things exactly that we would expect of it. So it tells you when you have a turbo, especially if you're at this kind of power level where you're 900 horsepower or so, you want a big exhaust on it. Armature older, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.